The Web 3.0 in crypto space holds limitless possibilities to make life-changing money. After all, you have unlimited access to an open, brand new, permissionless financial ecosystem. But this can definitely come with its share of risks. Because as of July 2022, over $2 billion have been taken in DeFi hacks year to date. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can profit from this trend yourself and actually make money by hacking smart contracts. But it might not be what you think. Okay, so if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then definitely head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how you can make money hacking smart contracts. So let me clarify what I mean by that. So earlier I was talking about how over $2 billion of cryptocurrency has been taken from DeFi protocols you know, this year alone as of July 2022. And what I'm teaching you in this video is not to continue to add to that number. I'm not going to teach you how to steal money for yourself, but how to keep other people safe from these type of attacks, because there's a huge upside for this. And there's a huge opportunity for people who have the right skills to help other people to get protected from DeFi hacks. And so that's what the skill here is, is basically white hat hacking, where you basically learn to think like a bad guy and help find the vulnerabilities that lead to these, you know, billion dollar attacks and disclose these to other people who might be vulnerable to them. And in many cases, they're going to happily reward you with a pretty big payday because you kept them from a, a much greater loss. And so that's where the big opportunity comes in for people with the right technical skills, namely blockchain developers who understand how to hack and also audit smart contracts. And that's how you get paid to hack smart contracts in an honest and ethical way. And so people ask me all the time, like, how can you actually learn this? How can you break into smart contract hacking and get paid to do it? In this video, I'm going to show you some top resources where you can find projects that will pay you to discover some of the top vulnerabilities to watch out for and actually how to spot them, you know, how you can develop this functional skill, and then some tools that you can use to help get the job done. All right, so let's start off with ways to actually collect the paycheck for getting paid to hacks, hacking smart contracts. So, you know, one of the top ways to do this is to look at bug bounties. So what is this? So basically, this is where, you know, projects actually put out postings to come try to find vulnerabilities in their smart contracts, and you can get paid to do this. So I'll just look at some examples here on my screen, okay? So you can see different bounties here, uh, like MakerDAO, with a wormhole, Olympus. I'm just gonna click on a, a bounty here. So basically you can see a description of what they're looking for and the amount of money they're willing to pay for people who can find you know, vulnerabilities that might contribute towards a loss of treasury funds, loss of user funds, or loss of bond funds up to uh, you know 3.3 million dollars here. So that's what a bug bounty looks like. And so how can you find bug bounties to look for? Well, you can look at websites like, like ImmuneFi. Okay, this is at Web3's leading bug bounty platform protecting $100 billion in user funds. You can also look at another website like uh, Code Arena, which has contests for this type of thing. And you can browse through multiple projects in this list that, where you can see bounties uh, that are quite hefty for anybody who can find severe security vulnerabilities. And so in addition to finding projects that are actually have open bounties, Another thing you can do is find projects that don't necessarily have bounties listed that might even be on a smaller scale where you're likely to find uh, security vulnerabilities, especially as a newer security auditor or newer blockchain developers. What do I mean by that? On a big project that, you know, has listed a multi-million dollar bounty on a website like, you know, uh, ImmuneFi, uh, this has already been through several rounds of auditing, okay? And the likelihood that you're going to find one here is going to be less than if you were just looking at a new project that may not have had as extensive auditing. So how can you find something like that? Well, many of these projects won't even have bounties listed. So you could look at, uh, you know, new NFT projects, for example. These are launching all the time. You can look at any of the NFT drop uh, calendars, okay, to find out new NFT projects that are, that are coming out of the scene. And you could look at their security, uh, you know, you could look at their smart contracts on the blockchain itself and see if there's any potential security vulnerabilities there. You're way more likely to find something on a newer project like that that's been through less extensive security auditing. Okay, so another way, of course, is to get a blockchain job, all right, uh, doing security auditing. You can just get on Google. I literally just search for blockchain security auditor job, and you can find you know, many of these here. So no matter how you make money uh, hacking smart contracts, getting paid to do that, uh, you definitely need the skills in order to pay the bills. So how do you acquire those? People ask me all the time, like, how do I uh, learn the skill of security auditing so I can get paid to hack smart contracts? 
Well, it first, you know, starts by learning to think like a bad guy. Okay, so you got to start thinking about like, how do I take money from this? Well, of course, the prerequisites go before that is to learn the programming languages uh, that are used to write these smart contracts. Okay, and the actual technology they run on, notably the EVM or the Ethereum Virtual Machine. So definitely check out in the free courses on my YouTube homepage. They'll give you an introduction on that. And of course, we teach you these programming languages step-by-step start to finish. And also an introduction to, on how to audit smart contracts over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. But once you've learned the basics and you've started to learn to think about how to take money from these smart contracts as a bad guy, the next step is to look at past vulnerabilities and then start to see patterns that have emerged that are most likely to pop up over and over again. Okay, especially on some of these newer projects that may not have been ex- extensively audited like I talked about a minute ago. So let's look at some of the top security vulnerabilities that happen over and over again and how you can learn to spot them. So one of the most common attacks that happens in smart contracts is called reentrancy. Okay, so I've made a video about this on my channel before, also in this four-hour solidity tutorial that I just put out. Uh, definitely go check that out on my YouTube homepage if you haven't already, but I'll give you a quick recap here. So reentrancy essentially is where you have a function that you can re-enter to and then make the function do something it's not supposed to before you finish calling it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's an example of a contract that's vulnerable to reentrancy. This is a bank smart contract where you can deposit funds here. It updates the balance and the mapping, okay? And then it has a withdraw function where you can actually take money out of the smart contract and it checks the deposited amount while it's doing that. Now, you know, you can't really hack this smart contract with a regular user wallet. Like if you had a MetaMask connected and you tried to go like, you know, deposit money and withdraw, but you can do deposit and withdraw uh, inside the same transaction, essentially on a loop with a separate smart contract like this. So essentially this contract attacks it by calling deposit and then calling withdraw. And then inside withdraw, it has a receive function on the smart contracts that calls uh, withdraw again. And it essentially just does this on a loop and drains the balance of the entire smart contract. Okay, so... Uh, reentrancy is a vulnerability that that that's how it works and this is really common among other smart contracts um so that's you know one to watch out for another one is access control so basically whenever a smart contract is created many times there are permissions on who can call certain functions like ownership so you might have seen the ownable pattern where there's a function that says only owner you can see example of that right here on this attack function uh where it's it's a function that's only owner which basically means there is an ethereum address that's associated with the ownership of the smart contract, and only that's a person is supposed to be able to do this specific function on the contract. So an access control problem is essentially a function where somebody else can call a function that's not supposed to. So for example, maybe you have something where you can take money out of a smart contract that's supposed to restrict certain people from doing it, and then you know maybe it's unprotected where anybody could do it or the wrong person can do it, or, or a situation where somebody can escalate their own permissions to become uh, the type of person that can take funds out of a smart contract. That's one of the most common things to watch out for in terms of smart contract vulnerabilities. All right, so next most common vulnerability inside of smart contracts is integer overflow or underflow for that matter. So what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, this is a situation where you cause a number to be bigger than it's supposed to be, and then it has a side effect that you don't expect, which is really resetting the number and making it smaller. So I'll show you my move with that. So Basically, uh, Solidity, one of the most common data types is an unsigned integer. So basically, this is a number uh, with no, it can't be negative. It's an integer, has to be positive value. Okay, so it's hence unsigned integer, minus sign is a sign, so there's no sign, so it's positive, okay? So, uh, or zero. So let's say we have a, and they attach numbers to these, okay, which is essentially a number of bits that are associated with it. So you see like uint8, you might see uint256, or maybe you see uint by itself with no number attached to it. That's just short for uint256. So in this case, like a uint8, for example, so uint8 uh, can only store, uh, you know, this is the largest number that essentially it can store right here. So if you look at this code, uh, uint8 balance of 255, well, let's say you just added one to that. So you would normally think that that would turn it to 256, okay, just by adding one to it. But really, this is the theoretical maximum uh, for what uh, uint8 can possibly be, okay? So if you just add one to that number, it resets the number and goes back to zero, okay? So if you were to, if this was a person's actual cryptocurrency balance uh, or something like that, then that has terrible side effects inside the smart contract. And that's a way that you can spot integer overflow to prevent that problem. So another big vulnerability that pops up in smart contracts are when people are actually sending cryptocurrency around, notably with Ether, okay, the actual native cryptocurrency, the Ethereum blockchain. So there's multiple ways to send Ether around inside of Solidity, okay? So you can do things like transfer, you can do things like call, uh, send, okay? So here's one example with transfer, okay? So, you know, we're, we're doing this less and less 
uh, these days is a recommended way of doing that. But one thing you have to understand is you have functions like transfer and then also functions like call, okay, which just sends a message to somebody else on the blockchain with a smart contract or an address. You can you could add value to that. That's how you actually send cryptocurrency with that message inside the uh, actual transaction itself. What you have to understand is these uh, these have return values associated with them. Like they return a boolean, a success, and also the data that was in it sent with that function. Okay, and so one of the biggest uh, vulnerabilities is that people don't actually check the return value of these transactions or messages that are sent around. So, example, you can see, uh, you know, uh, sending a low-level uh, call like call. We're basically saying to this address and call, sending some uh, cryptocurrency here with message value. It actually returns uh, multiple uh, values here. The first one is a Boolean, which is true or false of success, whether that call was actually successful or not. And then we check uh, to see whether that was uh, properly sent. And if it's not, you might just continue function execution inside of here, um, which would pr- have horrible side effects inside your code if the rest of your code required that that uh, transfer actually took place properly. And this is one of the things you can watch out for when you're looking for others' vulnerabilities. All right, so this is on the top things you can look for inside smart contracts that could cause you know security vulnerabilities that you want to disclose to other people and actually get paid for doing that, okay? So, you know, the last thing I want to talk about is are, is a tool that you can use to actually, you know, automate some of this process or speed this up or increase the likelihood you might find a vulnerability that you may have, you know, overlooked otherwise. So, you know, you definitely want to have the skill of understanding the programming languages and understanding the common patterns that pop up whenever you're auditing smart contracts that might lead to vulnerabilities. But you have this problem where you have to read through everything and like, you know, methodically think through where you might find these vulnerabilities, okay? But some of the easy stuff like a computer can recognize and you don't have to necessarily do that. And that's where you can uh, automate some of this with a static analysis tool. So, well, uh, you know, there's there's several out there. One you can check out is Slither, okay? So Slither uh, is a static analysis tool for Solidity smart contracts written in Python, okay? It has a suite of vulnerabilities that automatically checks for. It prints out visual information about the smart contract details and then provides uh, an API where you can also write your own static analysis if there's new things that you want to check for that it doesn't uh, currently support. So you can see a list of detectors that it has uh, down in here, and then also the ability to add your own right here. All right, so that's an overview of how to get paid to hack smart contracts, some resources you can use on finding new projects that will pay you to do this, some ways that you can learn the skills about how to recognize uh, you know, patterns where you can disclose these things, and also some tools that you can use to speed this process up so you have to find every single thing yourself. So I hope you like this video. If you want to get started on this journey today, how can you do that? Well, definitely smash the like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out. So we can learn about blockchain. But what you can do after that is definitely go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. The Like Udemy course was totally free. If you're just starting from scratch, you definitely want to get a primer on the programming languages before you, you know, dive head first into this. Those videos are going to do that. I just put out a brand new four-hour course on how to master Solidity for blockchain. And if you like those videos, you want to take the next step, learn to build a professional level project so you can get those skills. Also get an introduction to security auditing. Then head over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. You don't have to be an expert. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.